Hi, welcome back to Podium Pop. I'm Grace here with Celine, and we are giving you a race recap for the Miami Grand Prix. Um, but before we get started, make sure you are following us on social media, on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. We were at the Miami Grand Prix, so we have so much content out on our social medias. Make sure you are checking it out. And what do you say we get started? Yeah, let's go ahead and pop that bottle. Get right into it. Should mm -hmm. we discuss the elephant in the room? Yeah, we probably should bring it up. That we are Lando Norris, Norris's good luck charm. Yes, we are... Uh, Maybe not the only reason, but the biggest reason that he did win that race. Yeah. He got we his first win. attend our first Grand Prix, and he wins. It feels like the universe telling us something. Am I better than everyone? Better than everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry to all of you listening. Sorry, bud. We were there. We were there. It was... We're going to have a whole separate episode kind of talking about our experience at the Miami Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely, like, each day learned more and more about, like, how to plan better oh, yeah. our day and figure out what to do and what's worth it and what's not. We have so much to talk about. We met so many, so, so many amazing, like, you know, other, you know, influencers, content creators. Just fans in general. It, it was just so fun. And being yeah. surrounded by, you know, we've never been in... An environment around so many Formula One fans. Like, we've even been to, like, a watch party, but, like, there's not, I guess, a huge amount of Formula One fans in Cincinnati to where even the watch parties weren't super packed or anything. So to be around a bunch of people that just understood what we were talking about and not just, like, you know, nodding their head and being like, sure, sure. Um, it was really cool. Yeah, it was, it was a cool experience. Literally the best weekend of my life. Mm-hmm. And we're going to we're going to break down the races, the Formula 1 Sprint, Formula 1 Grand Prix, and then we're going to break down the Formula 1 Academy races. Mm -hmm. And then next week we're we're also posting this late because we got home Monday at like 7 p.m. so we're recording yeah. this on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Um so we're going to get this out Wednesday morning and then um next coming week on Monday is when we'll post like our experience at the Grand Prix and you know, tips and tricks, maybe if you're thinking about going next year or to a different race this year. Yeah. Which, I will say, I have a lot to discuss. Yeah. Well, All positive, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll get into that in next week's episode. Let's start with... What? Honestly? Okay, so just quick disclaimer. I haven't rewatched the race yet, have you? No. And it, it was it was definitely harder... Yeah. To follow everything going on. We also were, um, we were at turn 11 and we were right across from the, um, like beach club. And so we had huge TVs in front of us showing the race, but there were cabanas up in the beach club blocking the TV. It was so frustrating. It was. And, and we were at like the, the worst, like an a, a, the turn. I loved our turn that we were sitting at. I loved literally the literally loved it. Again, we'll we didn't know research. Either. We didn't know research. We were just like, let's Sh get the cheapest, cheapest one. Tickets. Yeah, <laughs> cheapest actual seat. Um, but um, the the one section we were sitting in, like we saw like a really weird angle of one TV, mm -hmm. a really weird angle of another, and then we had like the the big screen that was behind the cabanas. Yeah. So we were like getting like little glimpses of each screen. It also obviously is loud there, so while, like, the commentators are talking, if something's going on, like, the radio messages are, like, shown, but you can't hear what they're saying. Um, so I think that one thing that we, you know, it's it's harder to follow everything that's going on. Yeah, so we didn't catch everything. We This very well could be, like, a very broken up <laughs> race recap. We're going to recap, obviously we saw it, but we're going to recap what we know, and if we miss some things, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's start with the sprint. We, oh, so what I was going to get into is we missed a little bit of free practice because we, um, stopped to, like, eat and we watched it on a big TV and then we walked up to our stand. Um, but let's get into the sprint and sprint qualifying. Yes. McLaren was doing great in sprint qualifying. Oscar and Lando were literally doing amazing. It was so exciting to see and then they just didn't get the timing right for Q3. Mm -hmm. It was so It was so unfortunate. Like, we were, like... Because well, we knew McLaren was bringing upgrades. Mm -hmm. We, you know, they always they always say oh, our upgrades are, are going to be good, you know, and they aren't always good. I mean, they're good. Like, the Japan upgrades were good. Yeah. But this one, 
not to get ahead of myself. We all know who won, so I can get ahead of myself with that one. But like, no, the upgrades were the amazing. Upgrades were like ju- that. It was something and special. The to fact see. that Oscar only had fifty percent of the upgrades and how good he did this weekend mm-hmm. t- was insane. Yeah, and no, they um, the sprint qualifying first. You know, Q one, Q two, they were dominating. literally doing amazing. Lando got you know first in both of those, mm-hmm. and the way that the Q three worked, which sprint qualifying is already shorter times for qualifying mm-hmm. um qualifying sessions and then with everyone kind of being so competitive in the sprint qualifying it was one of those that they were waiting it out it was again also like they always wait it out they waited to get out. the timing right yeah and because they all use the softs in q3 mm-hmm. and they had one shot at it basically everybody yeah. had one shot at it and the timing was just not right for warming up the tires yeah mclaren didn't figure it out they messed- zach Brown even said they're like we messed it up and so, honestly, like, yeah, sprint qualifying, it was Max, you know, who shocked? Max was first. Max was shocked, actually. Actually, yeah, Max, Max was like, oh. shocked. He was like, where? <laughs> like, okay, that's P1 Max. He was like, wait, where was everybody? Yeah. He literally said, lol. Lol. He said, lol. He said a lot of insane things this <laughs> week. I loved Max this week. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was Max... Uh, Charles and Checo that were first, second, and third for sprint qualifying. Um, Shocking. Daniel Ricciardo got fourth. Daniel, Daniel Ricciardo got fourth. For Everyone quality. was like, he's back, baby. And like, mm, spoiler alert, he's not fully back yet because we didn't do very good the other stuff. But you know what? He got, mm-hmm. um, you know, fourth, which is, you know, to be fair, in, in an RB is really good. Yeah, in an RB, that's great. Um, and then Carlos, um, Oscar, Lance was seventh. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fernando, Lando was ninth, and then um, Nico was tenth. Was tenth in the Haas. So it was the top ten. Um, the sprint. I. So we were watching the start on this screen that's broken up with cabanas <laughs> in it. And first of all, during the sprint qualifying, nobody was in these beach club cabanas. I was like, take them down. Yeah, like just literally, literally nobody was in there. Yeah, uh, but so we're sitting there, and the turn starts. We see some moving. We see some falling off. I just see on the leaderboard Lando's name drop, 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 really drop, like, drop. I grabbed on you. I screamed so bad. I literally screamed. I was like, "There's no way mm-hmm. he just got out." At this point in the weekend, and not to make this whole episode about Lando, but you know, it is it's about gonna be. Lando. He has, like, a history of, like, when one bad thing, go, like, happens in a weekend, mm-hmm. it follows him throughout the week. And it really, like, he's really bad at, like, something happening and then pushing it to the side and getting over it. And, you know, we see it, it, it all the time. Like, has one bad qualifying. It's it's pretty much, like, consistent. I was, like, he he DNF during the sprint. and It I wasn't thought, his fault. It wasn't his fault. But he still compartmentalizes this stuff. And... I, in my head, I was like, shit, this weekend is, like, fucked for him. Like, this Well, is- see, I wasn't thinking that. I was. I Well, I wasn't saying that out loud, because I wasn't no, putting that yeah. in the energy. I know. Putting the energy out there. But, like, I was like, I really, really, really hope that this doesn't get, he doesn't get too in his head mm-hmm. about this. Mm-hmm. Um, thankfully, he didn't. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so he DNF'd. Um, be- Lance DNF'd because of it as well. Yeah. So it was like... Lewis went for a gap, ended up hitting Fernando. Fernando Fernando hit Lance. Fernando and Lance also were doing something else, too. We're too close to each other. And then mm-hmm. Lewis coming in. And then Lance ended up hitting Lando, causing Lando to spin out, which was unfortunate. And then um, I think Lance did the lap, and then he had to go in and ended mm-hmm. up DNFing. Yeah. It was very sad, but you know what? We got redeemed. Yeah. No. Um, another thing to point out for the actual sprint results, which, um, did we already go? We didn't say the sprints. But it was uh, Max, I, Charles, Checo. Top three. Mm-hmm. Um, Daniel held his P4 very well. Yeah. Actually, yeah. All top five stayed the same. Whoa. Top top six stayed the same from sprint qualifying to qualifying. So Oscar did get sixth. Um, but Logan... Logan was doing so Logan good. Logan did so good during the sprint. Oh, and my gosh. And it's so disappointing. So, originally, he came in, I think, what, like 12th or 13th? He came in 12th. Uh, but then K-Mag. And Lewis. And Lewis both got penalties that dropped them down. Um, so, Logan literally got 10th, which is so unfortunate to think about that if this was a regular, regular race, race, he would have got points. And his home race. And his home race. But in the sprint races, you only get points in the top eight. Mm-hmm. So, 
yeah, that was. Uh, it was sad. It was sad. He did so good though. But also, he did. He did really good. Very pleasantly surprised that. You know, not everybody was clapping and cheering when they go around, but when the announcers, commentators would, like, bring them up, people would be, people, people were, were cheering them on. People were showing up for Logan at the race. <gasps> yeah, they were. I was ready to fight some people. Mm-hmm. All, really all positive things. Like, me and the guy in front of me both wore Logan shirts on, like, the first day, and we <laughs> looked at each other, and we were like, ah, we're the only Logan fans in this section. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, real recognizing It was funny, real. yeah. It was, it was good. But no, yeah, Logan did great. Yeah, Daniel did good. Um, uh, kept his P4. Mm-hmm. Um, Nico we, um, Haas had a, pr- I mean, when I say Haas, I mean, Nico had a good weekend. Because Kevin caused terror everywhere. Yeah. Ev- Ke- anywhere and everywhere. Kevin Which, was on one this weekend. So, uh, at the end of this weekend, he's now accumulated 10 penalty points, and when you get to 12 penalty points, you get a race ban. So, <laughs> I'm yeah. sensing a race ban in his future it, I mean, before summer break. If he brings any of that same energy to Amola. Yeah, yeah, he's literally gonna get. I saw somebody um quote tweeted Nico's interview. He was like, "I had or sorry, somebody quote tweeted K Mag's interview, and he was like, I had to do what I had to do for Nico for the team.' Someone quoted it and said, "He's not your husband. He's your teammate." (laughs) Like, no, I mean, I do. I get it, but that if K Mag didn't do the things that he did, one, who knows if. Lando would have won. I still think that he could have. He had a really big gap. That's a whole other discussion. We're talking about this right now. You're confusing things. And I mean, just over the whole weekend. Oh, okay. Um, but also, I don't think that Nico would have done as good in both of the no, uh, both yeah. of the races if it wasn't for Kevin kind of fucking shit up. Um, we soon during the sprint quickly realized that we had great seats and great overtake area. Oh yes. We saw Yuki's overtake. I'm going to be so honest with you. I forget who it was on. But we, I think it was Lewis. Was it Lewis? I think oh, so. it was Lewis. Mm-hmm. We saw that overtake. I, like, have never screamed so loud for Yuki my entire life. I was like, Yuki! I was, like, screaming. It was yeah. so cool to see. I feel like we talk about Yuki's overtake so much because it's always, like, he. I don't think he necessarily overtakes more than the, the normal, you know, anybody else. Mm-hmm. But... They're all like so, so iconic. Good. Yeah, they like are. when when Yuki wants to make a moment, he, he knows, knows how to make a moment. Like he he's does. like, let's give the crowd a show. Yes. Um. It was great. It sprint sprint was great. It went by like it felt like in a blink of an eye. Oh, like, so quick. Watching it live, definitely. Like because sometimes when you watch it on TV, it feels obviously shorter than a real race, but it feels like you're still sitting down, getting comfortable watching. Mm-hmm. I feel like the sprint race. I was like. It was, like, five minutes. Like yeah, it, it went, went so, by quick. so quick. Even with the safety car. Yeah. So, um, good good points. Yeah. Um, also, um, we need to talk about the fact that in the sprint, Logan finished ahead of Alex and Joe finished ahead of Botas. Yeah. So, that is... Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Um, I love Alex. Me but too. I feel joy when logan does better than alex only because it's just like proving like he can he can do this he can do it um which is so frustrating about the feature race just because we'll uh, again we'll talk about it a little bit but Mm -hmm. the energy that he had at the sprint race did not transfer well into the real race um but we'll move on to Mm -hmm. qualifying qualifying um so qualifying was it was again. Kind I feel of like, like I like, don't remember watching qualifying. <laughs> Wait, I... Oh, because it was after the sprint. Yeah. So uh, the, I think the oh, structure. Oh, okay. Is, yeah. And also, we got out of our seats and we like. Oh, oh my god, we hiked to the um, stadium, the Hard Rock Stadium, where there's like a lot of stuff in there. There mm-hmm. were meetups there. We'll talk about that in the next episode. But we went to a few meetups in between. So I was like, "What did? When, when did that sprint happen?" Yes, I was so confused. Mm-hmm. Um. Also, sitting inside the um, stadium was really cool. That was really cool. Qualifying was good. Standard qualifying. Our yeah. friends, like, texted us and asked how it went. I was like, pretty standard. Like, pretty standard. Like, nothing, nothing. Like, I mean, it was um, Max and Max, Charles, Carlos, Checo, top four, which is all pretty standard. Mm-hmm. It, you know, right now, it's definitely, like, Red Bull, Ferrari, McLaren, and then Mercedes and Aston Martin are kind of back and forth. And the qualifying... Showed that. Where, where Aston Martin was 
kind of like I don't know where they were, but like everything else was pretty on par. It was like Red Bull, Ferrari, Ferrari, Red Bull, mm-hmm. McLaren, McLaren, Mercedes, Mercedes. Like it was very like expected. Everything was kind of like you could you could tell me that the result those were the results of the last like four races. Yeah, like, yep, yeah, sounds sure. right. It checks out. Mm-hmm. Um, so pretty standard. The race, however, the race was a little not um, Best standard. Of my life. It was no, I. I don't know what I'm going to, like, tell my future husband because he's going to be like, our wedding day, best day of your life, right? And I'm going to be like, mm, like, second, second best for well, sure. Well, I was there for when Lando Norris won his Grand Prix in Miami at the track. Yeah. No, I was talking to my coworker, and I think I was talking to him, and he's like, this is going to be your, like, favorite sports moment ever, or favorite moment. But, of course. I was like, the only thing that I think would ever make it, like, make Top a better place. moment would be if somehow we were at the race where Lando secured a WDC. World champion? Oh, my God. Sleep. Which, like, we got to figure out when to make that happen. Like, if it's if it sounds like it could happen, we I got to buy a passport. We got to buy a passport. I got to get a passport. <laughs> Which, like, I don't I don't think he's going to do that this season. But no. if, if McLaren can keep, you know, improving like they are, who knows? It's still so early in the season. It's so early. And I think that, like, everyone pretty much, like, until the the you know changes in 2026, I think everyone just assumes okay, it's Max gonna be is Red gonna Bull. be yeah, Max and Red Bull are gonna mm-hmm. pretty much dominate. But like I think this kind of like McLaren doing what they did this weekend proves it can be done. Yeah, and it was done. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll we'll definitely go into more of like the details. But obviously Lando won the freaking race. It's so excited, and he did it in. Away because the last two non Red Bull winners, well, they were both the same person, Carlos. Both of them, it was on weekends where Red Bull was having major issues. Max DNF'd on, you know, in Australia, it was Australia, right? Mm-hmm. Australia. And then the one before, he was having issues all weekend. Yeah. In this particular race, like, Lando just, just beat Max. He just was faster this weekend yeah and McLaren was faster Lando was faster like Max was definitely complaining about like having some like turning issues and mm-hmm. then not having any that grip. was towards the end of the race it was towards the, the end of the race and also issues. like that wasn't like something that was consistent over the whole weekend yeah like, that wasn't I, I think it's just like I don't know it just feels more special not because I'm a McLaren fan I mean it helps but because it really did it did seem like it was Fair, like it was like completely like yeah, deserved. That was, yeah. Not that Carlos is what wasn't deserved. No, but, um, um, but of course, some people are saying like safety car. What would he have won without? I mean, the pace was there. the The reason why, um, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. We need to talk about the start of the race. The start race of the race. race, yeah. And we need to talk about Oscar Piastri. My man, he came that through. That was out of seeing nowhere. him, like watching like the leaderboard. And then seeing him come through that turn and seeing him in second place. Oh, my gosh. Oh, the chills like, I got. I, so the way we were at turn 11, we could see, um, I guess, turn 10 up above us. Mm-hmm. Or them coming after turn 10, kind of in the, a little bit of a straight. Um, you could, I, We could see through the gaps of the building, like the color of the cars. So I was like, that was a rebel. I was like, that was an orange. That was an orange. That was an orange. Yeah. And then Oscar just comes flying by us. And Oscar kept up with Max so well. No, for the longest time. So well. And if he, he basically got screwed over. Carlos. He, yeah. Carlos. I took off my Carlos bracelet. <laughs> Okay, I he's, put it back on. I took it off and pretend threw it at the track. I put it on. I put it back on. Um, no, yeah. It, so Carlos and Oscar were pretty much going back and forth the whole race. Mm-hmm. There was definitely a lot of um, he. It was his fault. It was his fault. Blah, blah 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 blah. Back and forth. At the end of the day, like Oscar didn't do anything wrong, Mm-mm. according to the stewards. And I, I think the commenters Who are the stewards. I don't know. Yeah. Do I agree with them this time? I do. Yeah. And is it because it's Oscar? Probably. Yes. And that's okay. <laughs> he also, after coming back, made up so well and was doing so good. Mm-hmm. Were we absolutely terrified that he was going to cause a safety car? Yes. Yeah, no. He, even at one point, so 
the uh, the team was like, you can't, like, don't fight <laughs> yeah. it. Like, Lando's in first. Don't. The whole time I, a safety call. I had opened the McLaren app looking at, like, the um, pit to driver mm-hmm. communications. Communications. I couldn't think of the word. And <laughs> I think it was, like, two times. They were like, Oscar, please remember, Lando is in first. We don't need yeah. to do anything unnecessary. Poor, like, poor Oscar would. He'd, like, pull back a little. Like, it's like he'd forget. Yeah, he'd no. just be like, I got a race. He's like, a, he's a race car driver. He's like, yeah. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. Yeah, for and sure. And then he, they would send. he'd be like, oh, shit. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And I think, like, I think I would have. Not been upset, but a little bit like, damn, if he was in points, but he wasn't near points. Yeah. He ended up getting up to 13th, which was literally an amazing recovery. He mm-hmm. got to 13th because of some penalties as well. Um, he had a great weekend. It's just so upsetting to see, and I can't wait to see what he can do with 100% of the upgrades in Amola. Yeah. I'm so excited. I feel like, I think Oscar could get a win this year. I think so, too. And mm-hmm. again, I'm, I was scared to put this out. I was scared to put this energy out there, mm-hmm. but it worked when we put it out for Lando, so I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I It would be so amazing if Oscar, get these, Oscar gets these upgrades. Mm-hmm. He goes, he wins the next race. Back-to-back McLaren wins by two different drivers. That would be insane. It would be like... And I, I'm, I'm, I'm giving a sigh of relief. I was a little nervous Oscar was going to do it for Lando. Yeah, and and while I think Oscar would have been, like, so nice and respectful about it, oh, like, yeah. definitely not, like, bloated, which I don't think Lando did either, but, like, no. it would have crushed his spirit. And also, like, like, I know Oscar is not, like, it's only a second year, and, like, mm-hmm. I'm not saying he's, like, perfect or, you know, whatever, but I don't know, I just was like. He's getting really good. He's yeah. understanding more. Especially, like, like, well, at the beginning of the race, him keeping up with Max. Oh, my God, yeah. I I do wonder if Oscar didn't get taken out, I think Oscar probably could have won. Think he, oh, could have won? Could have won. Well, he, if you, I think if he you think been about on the podium. it, he would have been in the same position. Yeah. I he would have been right behind Max if, Ma- if he waited out. Max pitted, and Oscar was in the same spot that Lando was during that safety car. Yeah. Oscar literally could have won. won. He, he had the pace to keep up with it, even with only 50% of the upgrades. Yeah. I think he could have kept Max behind him after that. Um, which which maybe maybe makes Oscar feel even worse about it now, though. No, it does, 100%. You can, like, it's just so, as a McLaren fan through and through, it's so bittersweet. Mm-hmm. And, like... Also, just a little segue. People would ask us over the weekend. They'd be like, "Okay, McLaren, like Lando or Oscar," and I'd be like, oh, "Lando," but like Oscar's literally right there. Yeah, no, it's, it's like it's not like I'm like it's like a Lando, both. Lando, Lando. It's like right. no, I am like full McLaren. I'm full in on the team. Mm-hmm. I know they make some questionable decisions. Very, very questionable. Arrow McLaren, I'm looking at you. Well, also, yeah, I know. We can't. We'll talk about that. The, the visitor in the past. We'll talk about that. The <laughs> okay, I can. I'm too happy right now. We'll talk about that later because yeah. I got a lot of words. Um, but yeah, it's like I, I don't know. I love them both, and I'm happy Lando got his time. I'm happy McLaren's getting their time right now, and I'm ready for McLaren, Lando, and Oscar to be up there in the podium fighting those Red Bulls, fighting the Ferraris. And it's just so exciting. No, it's time that McLaren, like, comes back and, and we is, need like, to this dominant back. force. Yes. And to be a McLaren fan, like, even, like, last year when they... Oh, yeah. When those Japan upgrades hit. doing fantastic. And to be there and, like, see this progress and, like, be, be a part of it mm-hmm. as it's happening. Like, I can just feel it. It's like, I can feel it coming. Like, mm-hmm. the, I don't know. I, it's, it's crazy. But... The safety car. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I got ahead of myself. <laughs> we got so excited. Multiple times this episode. Um, so basically what happened during the race is um, it was like Max, I forget even who, it was like Max, Charles, um, Checo, Lando, I think. Maybe Carlos was in there too. But um, Checo pits, so he's behind Lando. He actually drops down quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Charles pits, he's behind Lando. And then it's Max and Lando in first and second. Mm-hmm. Max literally goes and pits. And Lando's like, okay, great. He's leading the race. We obviously know he's going to have to pit. Yeah. He has to change tires. Soon. I still went crazy. I still uh, went crazy. We were still so excited. Actually, I, made, I made the mistake. I was like, oh, Lando overtook. And you're like, no, no, no. Max just pit. I was like, oh. Yeah, she was really excited. And it was it was, it was good. It's still good. Um, but so basically, Lando was leading the race. And we we're like, this is so exciting. Like, we are just, like, grateful that we are seeing a race oh, that my God, Lando yeah. was leading at all. Like, yeah. we, you know, always had this feeling like Lando's going to win this. But it wasn't, like... We didn't see see the reality yet. It wasn't until the safety car, and 
it first it was virtual out, and then it went to full. Yeah, it was. It worked out like perfect timing because everybody else had already pit. Literally amazing, except for Lando. So he basically got the freshest tires by pitting during the safety car, mm-hmm. and he got his pit stop out of the way. He came ahead of Max, way ahead of Max. The team did so good on that pit. So good. Everybody was just so in sync this weekend. It's insane. Yeah, and basically that as soon as he, which the safety car happened because K Mag bumped into Logan. You guys, and I can't talk about it. It was, well, it, it's a podcast, girl. we got to talk about it. I was heartbroken. <laughs> and no, also like, for a second there, I was like, oh my God. And then we were like, who is it? Who is it? Because once again, we couldn't see the full leaderboard because of the stupid cabanas. Yeah. I literally was like, who was it? I'm like trying to get servers to look on my phone to figure it out. And then finally we see it's Logan and his helmet. And then I see K-Mag reverse and go back on track. Yeah. No, I, honestly, it happened. And Gracie was literally, poor. I love Logan, but Gracie loves Logan. I was upset. I looked at her and I said, Gracie, I know you're upset about this, but this is really good for Lando. <laughs> this is really so good, good for Lando. Yeah, you were like, as soon it's... as that safety car came out. And I was sitting next to it, <laughs> a very sweet old gentleman <laughs> that didn't completely know what was going on. No. Uh, like he knew, he knew a little bit. Like he was a, he was a Checo and Alonso fan through yeah. and through. And, and he was talking to me and he kept asking me a bunch of questions during the race. And, and he was like, because he knew, obviously, that I was a McLaren fan. I had, oh, yeah. yeah. He knew I liked He Mando was like, who too. are we rooting for? We were like, Norris and Piastri. Yeah. Or I think he heard us cheering one time. He said, for Piastri? We said, and Lando. Yeah. And, um, and, and he was basically like, we, we had this whole conversation. Like, I was like, oh, he, he pit. He did this off. Mm-hmm. And then um, the race started back up. He kept his lead. Mm-hmm. And then this, this gentleman turns to me. He goes, well, Lando still needs to pit. I'm like, no, he did it. He He was like, that's genius. Like, he was like, he was like, <laughs> yeah. this is like, he thought the McLaren had like just unlocked something new. And it, it was, was like, so cool. what? That's so smart. Like, he also had, I don't know if it was like his son, his grandson, like, I nephew, think it was whatever. His grandson. grandson was with him and his grandson was in McLaren gear. So before they had the little driver pamphlet out and he was like, okay, Norris Piastri, you're cheering for Norris and Piastri, McLaren, the orange. Yeah. It was so cute. Yeah. And some, another driver would go by, he'd be like, which one is that? I'd be like, that's George, George Russell. And he's like, ah, George Russell. Yeah. He knew his favorites. Yeah. And I can respect that. No, me too. <laughs> um, we also had hardcore Lewis Hamilton fans next to us and yeah. they, they were like just lewis fans it was like so funny to see because wh- i'm gonna be honest a lot of drivers would go by and i cheer like the whole crowd started cheering for checo and i was like okay Checo. i, know, I was like yeah, i was like checo oh my god checo. yeah <laughs> chance starting but they were like just hamilton fans so they were like cheering their brains out when lewis passed and mm-hmm. then george would come by and they were like it was silence <laughs> like which made me cheer even more for George. I was like, uh, yes, George. I could a bit, but I was like, okay, they're seeing their guns. They have their favorite. Yeah. And they, thought, they were like it. booing or anything, but like yeah. they were just Lewis Curly's. It was just funny to see considering I was cheering for like half the group. I know. Yeah, we were like, whoa, our favorite. And they're like, your favorite was two cards earlier. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no, it's true. Um, but oh, no, the. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, we also need to talk about um, when Carlos and Oscar, like, collided over and oscar had to go into the pit we were so confused because oscar had already pit and we see the cars come around and we knew the order obviously so we see like max and Char- and literally we see them come around and we just look at each other and gasp we were like where'd oscar where go the fuck is Oscar? and then we like look up at the tv and he's just sitting in the pit and it's a longer pit than normal and i i felt dread in my body again the, the gentleman again. next to me was yeah, like yeah. that's a long pit so i'm like no he, he's out he's gotta be out he, like, he like, came back in though luckily yeah well it was and i think he also was confused because normally they just change the tires yeah they change the wing or the front uh front wing and i think that yeah but yeah. it was um i mean sad logan crash race. sad that happened for oscar great timing for lando with the safety car the restart was good for him, too. Mm-hmm. He had a great restart against Max. He held Max off, which I'm going to be honest. I kind of sat there and I was like, all right, here goes Max. Yeah. But no. Yep. Lando held him off and the gap just kept getting bigger and bigger and mm-hmm. bigger. No, it was. It was so insane. By the time, I'm going to be honest, he had like a three, four second gap and uh, we were like, I don't know. 15 to 20 laps left. Mm-hmm. I was sitting there and I was like, he's got this. He's no, gonna honestly, win. it was like a specific point. I don't even know. It was like right after safety car, even before he had that like bigger gap. Mm-hmm. I sat there and it was, I think it was literally like lap, uh, like 23 or four laps to go. Mm-hmm. I sat there in my head. I was like, he's, he's winning this. 
I can't say anything out no, loud. No, I also... We were silent. We, we were say so silent. At words points, we just gripped each other. Yeah, after the safety car happened, no, no we didn't words, say any words were exchanged. I am not, like, a superstitious person in daily life, except for when it comes to sports. Literally, 10 laps to go, like I said, 3 laps to go, or when he got the 3 second gap, I was like, he's got this. There were 10 laps to go, and I was like, if I stand up now and I book it, I can make it to the podium. Mm-hmm. I can make it to the podium in time. I can do it. And then I was like, okay, I got to go. I was literally about to ask you if I could just run on my own. And then I was like, if I stand up knowing my luck and my superstition, something's going to happen. So I stayed sat. We like sat. at one point, we stayed sat. All, I, all I would do is open up the communications on the McLaren app. And then at one point we like got out our phones to do something. I was like, put it down. Yeah. Like, we cannot do a single we thing, but watch this race. No. And it's, I mean, like. With Lando in particular, like, all I was thinking was, like, we can't have another Sochi 2021. We can't. We can't God, the commentator, the on-track commentators brought it up, and I literally was like, will you please shut up? Yeah, no, and, I mean, I'm sure that's probably what was going through Lando's brain, too. He's like, don't fuck it up. Don't no, fuck I know. It up. I was so up. scared. It was, um, no, I, I, but, like, I, in my head, I was like, he's, he's won this. No, he's, he's got this. this. And then... It was like the, we literally had like two laps to go, and I think we finally were like, "Yeah." It was like two laps to go. People started standing. I was like, "I'm standing." I stood like on the bleacher in front I of me. I was tearing up. I was. Oh uh. my god, I was crying. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm gonna say one thing. Yeah. Every single person in that stadium, mm-hmm. in the grandstand, on that track, however many people there were, was cheering for Lando. No, it did not matter. Did not matter what team they supported, what driver they supported. It did not matter. Every person was up. Everybody was excited. Once he started leading, every time he came around, people were cheering and mm-hmm. cheering and cheering and cheering. It was so It was so like, special. like, I could cry thinking about it right now. It was so special. Everybody was so happy. It was just, like, insane in that feeling in the atmosphere. Like, genuinely, I felt, like, like sick. I don't even know mm-hmm. how excited. Like, my, like, my stomach hurt. I don't know. Yeah. It was crazy. It was so exciting. It was so cool to see, like, all the love and people cheering because you also, like, sometimes get too caught up in like twitter or like uh, tiktok or whatever the hate of it all yeah but it was so cool to realize that like everybody there was so excited to see lando get his first win and to mm-hmm. see like this moment in history because we witnessed a moment in history no literally it was it was amazing it'll be written in the textbooks one day <laughs> it will be written in the textbooks um no it was it was no it, it, for it being our first like feature race literally to watch live one, even re- disregarding Lando winning, it was a good race. It was a and great race. Miami, the track always gets a really bad rep it of does. being a boring race because there's not a huge amount of places you can overtake. We um, sat at a great overtaking spot. We did. Um, but even, like, people that, like, weren't at the race were like, this was, like, probably the most exciting yeah. race of the year so far. Like, it's just, there was so much back and forth. There was so much going on, like, with the battles with, like, Oscar and Carlos, and then Lando keeping his lead, and then everything going on. It was just... There's also, um, to, between Esteban and Alonso, that was great, too. Yes. We saw the Esteban... It wasn't was Esteban. He, when he took that dive bomb against Alonso, that happened, and then they turned kind of onto our turn Mm -hmm. and then we saw them like battle we saw them battle a bit a few times it was like and every time it was so exciting because we were near a bunch of Alonzo fans too and everyone's like ah yeah like it was so good it was really good it was oh my god I just can't get over the fact that like we were like okay we'll get these like cheapest seats let's get that and we ended up having so much action we sat across from the beach club mm-hmm. we saw a free a cheering concert okay like half of it a free steve aoki concert a free a john summit concert no, and it was some, like great other random djs no it was it was fantastic. it was amazing an amazing weekend all around again we'll definitely go more oh, yeah. into like the non-racing stuff at for the sure. at the i just got so excited weekend, but no it was so good oscar did get fastest lap um did you see lando say he was gonna try yeah he was like <laughs> i'm gonna try i was like mm. and then he was like uh he's like all i could think about was Andrea just being like, "Don't do it, no don't Lando, do no it. Lando, no Lando." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it was it was awesome, and and obviously Lando won, and seeing all of the other drivers go up and congratulating oh my him, gosh. and it was just really special. It was so special, and then um, I know it was cool to see him like taking his time too to drive through the track to wave to everybody. Yeah. That was so cute. Him jumping into his team's arms. Stop. I'm it tearing up just thinking about literally, it. Literally, like, oh, my, again, I just love when, like, something big enough in Formula One happens that my non-Formula One friends, like, send me stuff about yeah. it. Yeah. Like, my coworker was talking about how it was, like, all over, like, ESPN and how he saw news about it. Also, my, um, 
my one friend sent me like a a tweet and it was literally like a screenshot of like Lando being lifted into the air. I don't even know what the painting was, but it was like an old like renaissance like painting of like these people like worshiping like a god or something and like lifting them up in the air and it was like literally exactly like oh my god side by i'll show you it's like side by side perfect and i was like first of all love that you sent this to me second of all so true so yeah, true it was amazing and literally also i know this is about us all of our friends were texting us we have like a group message of our friend group that watches formula one they're all texting us and like they're like that's so cool that you're like you're always like the what if i'm there like that's so exciting like yeah. i don't know everybody was like so, happy, so happy for, for us. us i got so many text messages no like, literally i got text messages from my coworker. i got a text message from my one friend that his uncle texted him was like tell your friend celine her boy won yeah. congrats or something like that it was like I don't know. It was just such a special moment. It and was. We got to watch. Obviously, I'm not. We didn't. We weren't at the podium, but we were watching it on the TV. Yeah. Around a, surrounded by a bunch of fans. Oh yeah. Everyone was so happy. I was tearing up. Our reactions were insane. I started barking. I couldn't control myself. It's pinned on our TikTok. First pinned <laughs> yeah. video. Literally podium pop. Podium dot pop on TikTok. Go watch it. It's hilarious. I couldn't like control what was coming out of my mouth. Like, that was like seconds after you crossed the finish line and I start just recording. I also recorded my reaction to this whole last lap. Mm-hmm. I look so crazy when he <laughs> passes us. I am like cheering so hard. I look insane. At first I was like, oh, this will be a cute video to post. I look too crazy. Like <laughs> it's no it, it was... I'm cheering like a mad woman. It was mm-hmm. insane. It was so good. Um yeah, I just, and now I'm just so sad that it's I, over. No, the highs were so high, and the low was, like, hitting. The low was, yeah. It we was had also, a whole um, other journey after the race as well, which we'll talk a lot, talk about a little bit more in our, what happened at the Miami race, um, other than the racing. Spoiler alert, we were at the same club as Lando, and we were there first. We were there first. Um... We'll, we'll delve into that later, it was so make sure you have to regrets. listen to our, a lot of regrets. It's fine. Not in, like, a bad way. Yeah. Not, not in, like, a we were too drunk or something way, but we'll get into it next week. Tune in to listen to it. We were at that same club in Miami as Lando, Max, everybody. Apparently, Oscar, it looked like in that video. Yeah. No, so we'll much. We'll talk about so it next much. week. You're going to have to listen in. For sure. Um, any other things to discuss about the, the weekend? I mean, I know... Um, I know that we have, I mean, yeah, anything else to discuss? Oh, the Alpines did good this weekend. Actually, I was pleasantly surprised with that. Yes. Esteban got the first points for the team. Um, Esteban was doing great, honestly. Oh, another cool thing, seeing, I know I talked about the gap a little bit, but seeing the gap in real life was crazy that Lando no. had at the end. And also Max during the sprint. Like, both Lando during the race and Max during the sprint we can, how I said we could see, they would come and go around the last corner and then you would see the rest of the pack coming. Yeah. So it was like they were fully gone from our section and then all of a sudden, then you hear it again around the corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was, it really was cool crazy. It was crazy. Um, do you want to do your champagne um, pop and your champagne problem? Mm hmm. Okay. You go. Champagne pop. Well, champagne pop's going to Lando Norris, baby. Yeah, it is. Champagne I mean, pop is going to Lando Norris. How could you not? He got driver of the day. He got driver well of deserved. the day. Champagne pop, for and sure. And he got to stand on that top step. Mm-hmm. Finally. Easy, easy decision Easy to make. decision. I have a feeling I know who your champagne problem is going to be. I would like you to go first. Who's your okay. champagne problem? So my champagne problem is I'm on the fence. You can give two if you need to. No, as in, like, it's a champagne problem, but, like, also, like, I'll just tell you. I'm giving my champagne problem to K-Mag. Oh, yeah. He took out uh, Logan. Yeah. But, again, without that safety car. Yeah, we know. Yeah. So, it's hard. I think, and... He also was doing a bunch during the sprint. I'm going to be honest, the sprint was a blur for some reason for me. Yeah, no, he... But... Yeah, go keep going. Well, I was going to say, he... Did all of all of these things? I don't think he did it on purpose, but he was definitely driving a little bit more aggressively than he normally would, I mean, and I was, think it's because he already knew I'm not going to get into the points. He's doing it for the success of Nico. Yeah, and he said, you know, the more chaos I cause back here, mm-hmm. the more successful Nico's lo- going to be. I'm I'm driving aggressive to keep these people behind yeah. me so that they can't overtake. He said the the um, penalties. He was like, the penalties are a lot, but they were they were deserved. 
Yeah. He literally knows he earned, like, he earned those penalties. Yeah. And I think in the future, for the way he's driving, we're going to see um, rule changes come in. I don't I could that, see that. This isn't going to be allowed for much longer. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if it's going to start this year, next year, what, but I don't. I don't think the way that he's driving, there's going to be some rules implemented for sure, I feel like. I think so, too. But, yeah, he definitely got my um, champagne problem of the week. Mm -hmm. I think there's another person that I was thinking about giving it to, but I cannot remember who. So, must not have been important. What's yours? I would also agree with K-Mag. Which sucks, because I love K-Mag. What? Where is that coming from? I love K-Mag. I feel feel like... um, I don't know. I I like his personality better than I like Nico's. Okay. And I do... I don't think he's a good... Well, <laughs> I don't think he's the best driver. There you go. And I don't necessarily necessarily think he deserves a seat mm-hmm. all the time. But I like his personality. Mm-hmm. I also... Um, we I know we already talked about Yuki a bit. Yuki's doing so good. And it's once again just so frustrating to see how if this was any other driver... Like, if this was, like, Daniel doing good right now, or, like, I don't, Liam in the seat or whatever doing as good as Yuki's doing, they would be front runner headlines daily talking yeah. about Yuki for the next Rebel seat, Yuki for the next Rebel seat. Yeah. But they're not. No, they are Yuki not literally, talking about it. It needs to be talked about more. Yuki is literally top ten in the driver's seat. It's, it's, it's really upsetting to see the fact that... I literally even saw an article recently, like, after the Miami Grand Prix, that they were like, Yuki, Sonoda, not doing all he could do. What do you mean? Yeah. He is doing so good this year, and it's so upsetting to see. Yeah. It is. It's also just frustrating to you that he's being compared to Daniel, and I get it. We talk about this all the time mm-hmm. here. Daniel is a very likable personality, and everybody on the grid, you know, not even just the other drivers, but, like, the team principals, all, everybody, lo- the commentators love Daniel. Yeah. And Daniel had one really good qualifying and one really good sprint race. Mm-hmm. And you would think that that this man just like oh my God. won his world championship. Yeah. Like everyone was like, Daniel's back. He, he still got it. Da, da, da. It was crazy. And he did have an amazing, he did great. amazing qualifying and amazing sprint race. But Yuki has had many more consistent moments consistent this season. Is the word. And and because Daniel has one good race, they're like, oh, he's back. He's gonna get that Red Bull seat. Da da da. da. Like all this stuff, and it's just really frustrating feel bad for Yuki. Like, that same energy needs to be put towards Yuki because he's consistently doing it in that RB. Yeah. Yeah. But speaking of driver standings also. Yes. Um, Carlos got a penalty during the race. Mm-hmm. Knocked him down a little bit. Enough to where Lando did move into uh, fourth. Let's go. For the driver standings. So right now it's Max, Checo, um, Carlos, or no, Charles is getting very close to Checo. I think there is a chance that depending on the results of the next race, he could overtake him. Mm-hmm. Charles is sitting at 98 points while Checo is sitting at 103. Uh, Max is insane. still kind of pulled away, but um, Lando's also not too far off. Yeah. He's at 83 points. Well, he's tied for Car- with Carlos, I guess, uh, with 83 points, both of them. And then sixth place, Oscar is pretty far down. But um, it's... It's exciting. Uh, McLaren also got some good points this weekend. It would have been really frustrating because I think if, again, Oscar wasn't taken out, who knows what would have happened. Maybe he would have won. I think he could have gotten podium. It would have been so good to have, one, a double podium, mm-hmm. and two, the points from a double podium. Gosh, that would have been in- so good would for us. would have been so good for us. Um, we could have used those points for sure because Ferrari did did pretty good this week as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously Red Bulls. Dominating. Miles away. Yeah. But um, all in all, great, amazing race. Great Formula One race weekend. Should we great stuff. dive into Formula One Academy? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the first race on Saturday was uh, we um, watched that inside the stadium on mm-hmm. like a Jumbotron. We ate our lunch. We did miss the beginning, um, but that was a great race. I There's some good hard racing they are on. good racers and i real quick i'm just gonna say max is so right these cars need to be more up to the formula one car standard mm-hmm. for these girls to get that experience yeah. they're getting great experience in these cars right now but they were over half a second slower than the formula one cars 
and they're so much smaller. It was crazy to see the size difference. Yeah. But that aside, I think we need to make some more progress with that. Loving what Susie Wolf and everybody's doing. No, Not going to take away from that at all. Yeah. I just am, like, reiterating and agreeing with what Max said, but... Yeah, no, I, I think yeah. um, they put a lot... Like, Formula Academy, they knew that Miami was going to be their, like, a big one to get mm-hmm. media around. And I oh, think yeah, they did a, a fantastic great job. Idea. So many people are talking about it. So many celebrities. Kendall, Kendall Jenner... Jenner which okay. we talked about that. I feel like Kendall Jenner, like if like Susie could do it and get her in with them. Like Kendall yeah. loves sports. Like she's a big basketball fan. She's like all for girls. I don't know. I feel like oh my god! Imagine great. Dude. Imagine an eight one eight car. Oh, oh yeah, my god! Be, the eight one eight green. That'd be good. That would be beautiful. That'd be. I'd love wow. that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was great to see Kendall there. Definitely brought a lot of attention. Like. Are you kidding me? That was amazing. Yeah. Miss Charlotte Tilbury was there, and she gave us one of the greatest memes ever. <laughs> yep. Her looking at, like, the screen. Yes. Yeah. <gasps> what? <laughs> and you can literally see her go, what happened? <laughs> um, but race one, Abby, race one of the Formula One Academy weekend, Abby pulling one, Dorian Penn got second place, and our girl, Chloe Chambers, mm-hmm. she pulled it off at the very home end race. to get podium at her home race. It was it was, and for everyone was cheering. Oh my everyone god, was everybody was cheering. It was so exciting. Mm-hmm. I love to see that. Um, it's hard too because Formula One Academy, similar to Formula One, even more so though. Like I have like too many favorites. too many favorites. Like I love Abby pulling. I think she's gonna be an like a force to be reckoned with mm-hmm. in, in motorsport. Obviously, I love Dorian. Like we talk about her all the time. Yeah. Chloe Chambers, Leah Block, both Big Leah fan. both Leah feel a, an allegiance to him just because they're American, yeah. but also just because I like them. Um, Bianca, you know, being McLaren Karen. driver, driver. It's just too many of my favorites. Yeah. On it. Um, Leah had an unfortunate first race. Mm-hmm. Um, that was really sad. Mm. The uh, everybody there was a lot of support around Leah. Like the commentators talked about about like her and her dad a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, that a was really cool. They talked about. Chloe a lot too, which makes sense. The two Americans. Mm-hmm. I think um, people, as as far as like them being the two Americans, people gravitate towards Leah more just because again they all were fans of her dad. Yeah, okay. Um, so I think that she sometimes gets a little bit more like media and support mm-hmm. than. And I think also probably the fact that Williams does a better job of including Leah in like race stuff yeah, they rather do. than in like interviews. You don't see like Haas. And Chloe doing much, which they need to. They need to. Um, but I think Williams is actually does it. Uh, Williams and and Red Bull does pretty good too of like yeah, kind of do. like elevating their Formula One Academy drivers up to like mm-hmm. the same standard as their drivers. But I think Williams does it best. Yeah, Williams is a side best. tangent. But um, also RB brought the Miami livery. Oh my god, we didn't talk about that. RB oh, had the best livery. Best, so good livery I've ever seen. So good, you guys. Um, but they brought that livery up for what is her name? Comda. Uh, uh, Omna. Omna. Mm-hmm. Um, which was so cool to see that mm-hmm. she got like a special livery as well. She was at like the launch and everything. So yeah. I, they also did a great job, mm-hmm. um, including her. Race two on Sunday. We, um, well, you watched these in our grandstands, and I was really surprised by the turnout. Yeah. There was a great turnout, and like, and it wasn't just a turnout where people were sitting already in their seats waiting for formula to start it was like a turnout where like people were watching people were recording we were excited clapping cheering it was so good yeah we had a person um we like went higher up in the grandstands to sit they had some covers so we like sat under the shade and there was like a guy right behind us i think he like went to go to the bathroom or something every time chloe came he was cheering so loud it was Mm -hmm. so cute (laughs) it is it was also really special because Again, like, Formula One Academy, it feels like every race they have, they get more and more and more, like, media mm-hmm. attention and more they and more, do. like, fans and people wanting to watch them, um, especially from last year to this year, but also just more and more every race. But it was so special seeing, like, there were so many, like, young girls there, there too. There were. It was so and cool. And it was, like, it gives me, like, chills thinking about it. Yeah. And, like, I even, like, at one point, like, texted my, my friends and, and was just, like, it's just – well, and then also – they announced that they're doing their own, like, TV show yes. similar to Drive to Survive with Netflix. Mm-hmm. But, like, it was just, like, beautiful to see that so many people so were showing amazing. up. And, like, not even, like, the young girls and, and us, you know, two girls there. They were, like, these, like, grown men being like, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, Chloe. Like, yes. it was, like, that they are, like, getting into it. There was that whole, uh, there was an issue with the commentators during the, the race. We do need to talk about that. Yeah. Um... Are we diving in now? 
Yeah, we should. One of the com- first of all, the commentators the whole week. This was the on track commentators. There mm-hmm. was I literally have no clue their names. It was an American and someone from England. Yeah, the I. F- it was the American more than the other guy who was, was shocked making these unnecessary comments. First of all, when we walked in, I don't forget if it was Saturday or Sunday. He was like, "These girls here are racist." And he goes, "Oh, I don't know. Should we should we call them females?" And we were like. Yeah. Or like no, you can call them women. You can call them girls. It's yeah, fine. It's like it's fine. fine. Uh, at one point, again, like, and these are things that I we actually heard. There was so much more stuff. Again, we couldn't hear everything with yeah. the commentators because it was loud. Um, so there were definitely stuff that we missed that we saw after the fact on mm-hmm. Twitter. But like one comment, I specifically heard him be like, "All right, girls, put your phones down." Like, oh my time. gosh, yes, the race is starting. Like, be like talking to the girls and like the fans in the in stands. the stadium. I'm sorry, I want to take a picture. Yeah, who cares? Who that, cares? That this, this grown man next week. Is he allowed to take the picture no, that he's literally. taking? Like, what? That is so, like, that's one of my misogynistic. biggest uh, misogynistics and, like, pet peeves in sports and media. Like, when that happened at the baseball game of all the girls taking the pictures there. I paid money to be here. If I'm going to sit here and take pictures, I will. Yeah. I don't care. Like, let, and you know what? Men do it, too. Like, all it's, the time. It, but it's always called out for, for women. Yeah. And, it's just, yeah, it's super unfortunate, and there's so many more comments made he um, that... He made a comment by starting it off saying, not to sound misogynistic. Yeah. Like, if you have to make that, if that's just your don't preference. And he made that comment in reference to Abby Pulling fixing her hair after she got out of the car, mm-hmm. as if Lewis all of these drivers don't get Carlos out of the car and fix their hair. As yeah. if on the podium they don't take their caps off and then run their hand through their hair and fix it. Yeah. It's so stupid. She just got out of a car, a sweaty car, driving for... A half hour, 45 minutes. She wants to fix her hair. Her hair's probably going to look crazy. My hair looked crazy when I took my hat off. Yeah. I'm going to fix it. It's so insane. And, like, it's not necessary. Yeah. I, um, somebody had tweeted about it and, like, tagged F1. Mm-hmm. And Laura Winter saw it, thankfully. Yeah. And she, like, responded to the person. I love her. I love her so much. She love responded her. to that person and was like, thanks for letting me know. Like, I'm going to escalate this and look yeah. into it. So. I think... And I, I think that everybody in, in motorsport respects Laura a lot, too. So much. So where she's using that, like, respect that she has mm-hmm. for the greater good. Like, she is a huge advocate, and I think that there are some, you know, other people that wouldn't have done the same thing. Like, Danica Patrick, like, you don't see her, like, saying, okay, let me, let's make a difference. Like, let me look into mm-hmm. this. Like, I mean, there, you can say a lot about Danica Patrick, but yeah. one thing you, you can definitely say is that she is not nearly using her experience and as a woman of respect um to to make it a better place for women in motorsport just thanks laura though love ya we talk about how much we love laura all the time Mm -hmm. um race two did we talk about these results no we didn't do the results yet (laughs) Um, we got off on a tangent (laughs) who shocked yeah um race two results abby pulling one again so that was awesome for her to see to sweep the weekend bianca bustamante got second place and dorian Payne got third place again bianca's first podium with mclaren yeah mm-hmm. um and not again for third place for dorian again podium for dorian mm-hmm. um yeah. chloe was so close again though she, she was fourth. she was doing good she had a great weekend she had a, such a good weekend it was so and good to see. i'm excited to see her continue Me i mean too. she gets closer and closer like every every week it feels like yeah she does um When's the next? Do you know the next one for Formula One Academy? I'm while. sad that there's not going to be another one that we're able to go to this year um, because they're not coming to Austin or Vegas. Mm-hmm. Not that we have tickets for Austin or Vegas, but you know we're putting it into the the putting the energy out there that we're going to be at both of them. We'll the see. next race is in Barcelona, so in June. Okay, end oh, of June. So long, right before winter winter break, summer, summer break. break. I don't know. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, quick, um, updates. I mean, nothing, I mean, a lot else we, happened. We, um, we haven't talked about Nui. Yeah, we gotta talk about him quick. Adrian Nui's leaving Red Bull. We all know Confirmed. this by now. Confirmed, for sure. Um, nobody knows where he's going. Nobody knows where he's going. A lot of people are hinting that he's just gonna retire. Retire, or maybe even just take an extended break. Mm-hmm. Um, We'll see. He deserves it. He's been he, working for so long. Yeah, no, he... If I, I wouldn't were him, be surprised. I'd be like, all right, let me... Yeah. Let me go. He's, like, branch out. He's, like, a genius. So, like, he should just try to, like, make, like, NASA. the first, like... Yeah, go to NASA. Like, go to NASA. Build, a, build a, another rocket ship. Like... Girl, get us to Mars. <laughs> yeah. Like, you could be... Your brain... You could be doing so many things. Yeah. And you're building race cars. <laughs> 
Um, Not that I don't love it, but it's just funny that that's how you use it. Use your greater power. Uh, I feel like we hit two quick things real quick. They all went out af- after the race to celebrate Lando's win. They mm-hmm. went out to dinner with Travis Kelsey. Love that. <laughs> Love that. Lando and Travis Kelsey followed each other on Instagram. Love that. Uh, it was really cool to see them at um, out in those pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, that was amazing. They looked like they had so much fun. Lando was... Lando was up when we went to bed, and we went to bed at 7 a.m. So, yeah, so. <laughs> I, I think I he's still, he has, I think he's still, still sleeping off that hangover. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they brought Leo, Charles, and Alex brought Leo to the paddock. Mm-hmm. Those pictures were so cute. First of all, he got a paddock pass. Second of all, so cute. It literally said Leo Leclerc Saint Malo. Mm-hmm. That. LeClaire St. Malo? Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, that is a special last name right there. That is... Oh my god, that's insane. It's so good. So good. Not oh. to get ahead of myself, but their future kids are going to have insane amazing. last names. They're amazing names. sounds like, like French royalty. Oh my god, it literally does. No, sorry, not French royalty. But what, no. Whatever. Whatever. Um, those pictures of Leo were very cute. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I feel like we could talk for a whole other hour. Um, we can and we will. We will. For the next episode. Yeah. So definitely, definitely tune in. We're going to be talking so much more about what happened off the track. Yeah. So much happened. We're going to talk about all of the um, amazing Formula One friends that we got to meet in person. Yeah. We're going to talk about what we did um, after the race. We're going to talk, which is insane. Chaotic. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, any things that, like, tips and tricks and what we did, what oh, shuttles yeah. we took. You know, where we stayed even and, and where we, you know, how we thought of how it. How we liked um, it. Just to give as much information. Yeah, tips because for future races. Because we came in with, with not a lot of Yeah, we did a bunch of research. Yeah. And, like, we, we came in kind of blind. It's also, like, like Friday, we kind of figured out on the day as we were going. Mm-hmm. And so we have, like, so many updates. Like, we figured it out, and then we figured it out better. Yeah. So look out for that. And I was going to say something. I don't remember what. Hmm. We put a lot of content out there. So, again, oh, yeah. go check out our social media. Check out we our have social so media. much in our drafts, too, that, like, we just haven't posted yet. And, it's insane. Um, yeah. We we have oh, some more fun content coming up mm-hmm. um, for the month of May and, and hopefully um, get some stuff to you all with updates soon. We'll for sure be at the 500. We'll be at and, the 500. And um, I don't know. If you see us at a race this weekend, don't be surprised. Yeah. It, it very well could happen. <gasps> I'm addicted to it. First of all, and second of all, the smell of the cars oh. after they go around the track. So I, if I would buy it as a candle scent. Yep, it was so better than better than gasoline, better than a lit match. Yep, those are some of my favorite weird scents. Yep, the cars after they drive in the track, oh, it smelled so good. It smells so good. We're about to run out of time, so we're going to end our episode here. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for listening to our recap. Remember, like we said, we have another one coming next week on Monday um, about our experience. Make sure you follow us on social media. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed it, subscribe, like. Please do. Consider giving us five stars if you think we've earned it. And we can't wait to talk to you again next week. Bye. Bye.